This is the third example video for our series on abstract algebra. So let's jump right into it. So for the first one, let's let g be equal to the set of real numbers without the number negative one, and then we'll define this operation star so that a star b equals a plus b plus a b, and then our goal is to show that g together with star is an abelian group. So recall that we have a few things to prove. We need to prove that there is in fact an identity. I think the easiest way to get this identity is really just to look at this and guess the identity. So let's maybe notice that a star zero is equal to a plus zero plus a times zero, but that's clearly equal to a. And then similarly, zero star b will be equal to b. But that's exactly what we need in order to have an identity. Okay, so now let's prove that we have inverses. So that involves trying to solve the equation a star b equals the identity, which in this case is zero. Maybe we'll solve this for b, and then we'll rename that b a inverse. So let's see, this is gonna give us a plus b plus a b equals zero. Okay, but that's gonna give us b times one plus a is equal to negative a. Okay, but then we can go immediately to b is equal to minus a over one plus a. So that being said, that makes this negative a over one plus a a good choice for a inverse. So we have a inverse is equal to negative a over one plus a. Okay, great. So there we've got inverses. Inverses take this form. Notice that since, let's see, since a is a non, since a is a real number not equal to minus one, this makes sense. Furthermore, this object on the right-hand side can also never achieve the number negative one for similar reasons. So now let's maybe move on to, what do we need to prove next? Associativity maybe. So let's look at that. So associativity, let's look at a star b star c. So that's gonna be a star and then b star c is equal to b plus c plus b c. But then that's gonna give us a plus b plus c plus b c uh, plus a times b times a b c. So that's just applying the star operation between a and then this object right here. Okay, and then now we wanna factor that in the opposite order. So we'd like to end down here with a star b star c, which that's equal to a plus b plus a b star c. And then we just have to link from here up to here, but if we were to carefully expand this out, we would get exactly this term right here. So we have associativity. All right, we've got identity inverses associativity. Clearly by the construction of this star operation, we have commutativity. That's because addition and multiplication are both commutative. That means we've got an abelian group. I guess we would have to check that we have a closure, but, but I'll leave that as a little exercise for you. Okay, so now let's move on to this next one. It's kind of a number theory problem. Let's find all integers x such that 5x is congruent to 4 mod 9. So we know that 5 have an, has an inverse mod 9, and mod 9 it is unique. It's not unique over the integers, but it is unique mod 9. And in fact, the inverse is 2. That's because 5 times 2 is 10, which is 1 mod 9. So we could multiply both sides of this congruence by two, and that'll give us x is congruent to eight mod nine. But that's not all integers. How to write it as all integers would be as follows. So we have x is equal to, let's see, nine n plus eight as n runs over all integers. And that would be a way of like describing all solutions here. All right, let's move on. So next, let's find a multiplication table for the group of units mod 15, u15. Okay, so remember, that's also known as a Cayley table. So here we've got multiplication, and then let's also notice that u15 is made up of all of the numbers between one and 15 that are relatively prime to 15. So that means they can't have three or five as factors. So we have one, two, four, 
we can't have five or six, we can have seven, eight, we can't have nine or 10, we can have 11, we cannot have 12, because it shares a factor of three, we can have 13, and then we can also have 14. So we have those elements right there. So that means we need to move these down the columns as well. So one, two, four, seven, eight, 11 and 14. And I'm just gonna partially fill this out because this is like a fairly simple kind of exercise. So multiplying by one, we just fill in exactly what we started with given that one is the multiplicative identity. So there we have that right there, that's pretty easy. And now let's multiply by two. So two times two is four, two times four is eight, two times seven is 14, two times eight is 16, but 16 is one mod 15. Two times 11 is 22, but that is seven mod 15. Then two times 13 is 26. 26 is 11 more than 15, so this is 11 mod 15. Finally, two times 14 is 28. 28 is, let's see, 13 more than uh, 15, so this is 13 mod 15. So there we have it. There's like all multiplications by two. Now let's do a couple of multiplications by four. So four times two is eight. Four times four is 16, which is one. Four times seven is 28, which was 13 just as before. Four times eight is 32, but that's gonna be two. And that's because two is, and that's because 32 is two more than 30, which is a multiple of 15. Four times four is 44. That's one less than 45, which is a multiple of 15. So that means it's negative one mod 15, which is the same thing as 14 mod 15. And then maybe I'll leave it to you to fill in the rest. I would like to point out that this is getting a little bit messy. So we could maybe break out the rows and the columns by adding some lines in here if we wanted to. Okay, so there's like a partial structure of this. Like I said, I'll let you fill in the rest. Now we'd like to find two elements of GL2R that do not commute. Let's recall that GL2R is all invertible two by two matrices. That's all two by two matrices with determinant non-zero. This makes a group under matrix multiplication. It's not too hard to find these. Let's look at one, one, zero, one times one, zero, one, one. So let's multiply these two matrices in both orders. So if we multiply it in this order, we'll get two here just by swiveling. And then we'll get, let's see, a one here, we'll get a one here, and then we'll get a one here. Now let's compare that to the other order of multiplication. So let's see what we'll get for that. Okay, so that's gonna give us a one up here, and then we'll have a one up here, a uh, one right here and a two right here. So let's notice that these are not equal. So this is a nice example of a non-commutative group. Okay, we've got two more. Okay, so two more. The first is to look at the following set of matrices H. We have ones on the diagonal, and then above the diagonal we have these numbers X, Y, Z, which are real numbers. We'd like to show that this is a group. This is in fact known as the Heisenberg group. Okay, so let's first note that we definitely have the identity in here. So let's see, the identity matrix here is just with all ones on the diagonal, and this is definitely in H, and that's because, let's see, we can just set X, Y, and Z all equal to zero, and that produces that matrix. Okay, so it's got the identity, I guess I'll let you check closure on your own. It's pretty easy to see that if you multiply two matrices like this, you get another matrix like this. Now let's look at inverses. Okay, so in other words, we need matrices that are of this form that multiply to give us the identity matrix. So of course there's like a algorithmic way to get to an inverse, but let's do it this way just, you know, for simplicity. Okay, so let's multiply these matrices and see what we get. Okay, so now multiplying this out, in this top left entry will have a one, and then doing our swivel multiplication, here we'll have an A plus Y, 
And this next entry will have, let's see, one times B, and then X times C, so plus CX, and then plus Y. And then let's see, here we'll have zero and a one, and then we'll have C plus Z here, and then finally zero, zero, one. So I guess that proves closure as well because that is of this form up here. Now we'd like to tune A, B, and C that makes this equal to the identity matrix. So let's notice that immediately we need A to be equal to minus Y because this has to be zero. We need C equal to minus Z because this has to be equal to zero. And then we can put those into the requirement that this is equal to zero in, in essence to finish this thing off. So we also need B minus, let's see, X times Z plus Y equals zero. So that means we need B equal to X, Z minus Y. So in other words, the inverse of this right here would be this matrix right here where we've replaced A, B, and C with these combinations of X, Y, and Z. Okay, we've got an identity, we've got inverses, I guess the next thing to prove would be associativity, but actually in so associativity is inherited from the fact that matrix multiplication is in fact associative. So we're good to go there. So all of those things together prove that this is indeed a group. Okay, so now let's look at this. We've got G, which is Z2 cross U3. So everything here is happening mod two. Here it's happening mod three, but, but we're doing multiplication. And we have a combination of A comma B with C comma D as A plus C and then B times D. And now let's make a Cayley table. Okay, so there are four elements in this group because there's two elements here and there's two elements here. Here the elements are zero and one. Here the elements are one and two. Everything relatively prime to three. So that means we'll need uh, zero, one. We'll need zero, two, we'll need one, one, and we'll need one, two. So those are all of our elements. And then here we'll have the same thing. So zero, one, zero, two, and then one, one, and then let's see, one, two. And now let's make our Cayley table. So we add in the first component mod two, and we multiply in the second component mod three. So adding here will give us zero, one. And in fact, this is the identity element because multiplying by one gives us no change at all and adding zero also gives us no change. So we can easily fill in this first row and this first column without much issue. So there we have it. And now let's operate by this zero, two. So remember adding in the first component, multiplying in the second. So we'll have zero plus zero, which is zero, two times two, which is four, which is one mod three. Zero plus one is one, two times one is two. And then here we'll have one, one similarly. Then we can fill in the rest. So let's see, by commutativity, we know this is one, two, and this is one, one. Now we have one, one and one, one, so one plus one is zero mod two, and one times one is one mod three. Now again, one plus one is zero mod two, and then one times two is two mod three. Then by commutativity, we can fill in a zero two right here. And now let's combine, combine one two with itself. So one plus one is zero mod two, and, one, and two times two is one mod three. So there we've got our full Cayley table for this group. And that's a good place to stop.